Welcome back everybody. Today we've got some exciting news. I accidentally bought a car at auction and it's a 2003 Mitsubishi Montero. So I'm going to take you guys through the story of how I ended up accidentally buying this car and we're going to check it out. I don't know anything about the car. I don't know if it really runs and drives. It says it's got some damage. It says it has some mechanical damage. I don't know if it's got rod knock. I know almost nothing about this car, but I wanted a really good price. So come with me as we figure out if this thing is any good. So like I said, I legitimately don't know anything about this. I bought it completely sight unseen. I haven't run a VIN check on it. I didn't have Copart do any of the searches they do to figure out does it run, does it drive. It says run and drive on there, but that means it just like inches forward a little bit. So I have no idea, but it just got delivered on a tow truck. So I'm going to see it for the first time and take you guys through my first impressions and figure out what the heck we're going to do with this thing. Okay, now I know what you're thinking. There's no way that someone accidentally buys a Montero, but it's true. I actually saw this, my buddy sent it to me and he said, hey, do you wanna bid on it? I said, yeah, maybe if we can connect. Long story short, I didn't end up meeting up with him to bid on it. He bid on it without asking me and said, hey man, I hope you actually wanted this, I want it for you. So I actually won this sight unseen and here you can see me scrolling through the ad, looking at the damage and what's what I can see from the ad on Copart of what's wrong with it. I knew it had low mileage and the body damage looked not that bad and the interior pictures look good. The top of the motor looks good. So overall, I was feeling pretty confident about this car. As you can see here, I'm going through the major details, 185,000 miles, front end damage and mechanical. And I thought this front end damage was just gonna be the fender, but I truly bought it sight unseen. So I hadn't seen it until it showed up in the lot. All right, ladies and gentlemen, here it is. You're seeing it for the first time as I'm seeing it. My newly acquired 2003 Mitsubishi Montero Limited in all black. This is basically the black version of the other Montero that I have, the white one, although it is not the 20th anniversary edition. So I'm seeing this for the first time. So we're just gonna, we're just gonna explore it together and see what's going on. So the first thing I notice here, the fender is crinkled in. I knew that it's actually not as bad as I thought. It's just bent in right here and back there. That might even just pull out. And it looks like maybe up here, there might be a little bit of damage, but this front core support looks pretty good. It might just be this plastic. It said front end damage, so I was expecting that. And this bumper uh, looking a little crunchy. Other than that, it's looking really good. This side is relatively clean with a little bit of paintwork right there. This door is straight, no damage to the locks. Some damage here, maybe it ran into a curb is my guess. Um, that's what that looks like. So maybe an accident, but it, it looked to me like most of this was taken up right there. Around the back, dent here, I saw that coming. And then this is, this is cracked and very poorly done. So I'll have to figure out that. And then this was also an interesting thing to me, sure enough. Got some rust, that's what this was covering up. Actually doesn't look too, too bad. It's underneath this glass. So that'll be interesting to figure out. But the rest of it's looking pretty clean. This, this side's clean, this panel's clean. I mean, they're obviously dirty, but you know, clean from body damage. It's just a little bit up front. And then this is clean as well. So let's jump into the interior. I have no idea if it fires up, no idea if it's got battery. Seats actually looking okay. I always, there's there's not a single Montero on the road that doesn't have this issue right here. Seats okay, it's got the leather, it's got the headrest, it's got the sunroof. Sunroof's looking good. I don't think it leaks. I don't, I don't smell any leakage. Regular climate controls are in here. Everything's, everything's looking pretty good. That doesn't open, classic. That does open, so that's good. Oh, this is always fun figure out about the previous owner, whatever that is. And then just a giant needle for knitting or something. This latch is broken. Got all the, most of the junk out of there. Let's look in the back seat. Back seat. Guys, I won this for $700. This is pretty good so far. Third row seat, it's got floor mats. I haven't had a third row seat in forever. See if the rear opens. Oh, this handle is broken. I wonder if I could mess with that and figure out how to open it. Maybe not. I guess I could figure out. Well, it looks pretty good back here. I mean, a little messy. It almost looks like maybe they had kids back here. All right. 
Okay, so I'm stoked about this. Um, I don't, I have no idea if it's gonna run. This is my first time looking at it. So let's pop the hood and see if there's anything in there that would make me think that it's not gonna run. Um, hopefully I can get the hood open. Oh, little, little hard to pull that latch. Let's, let's take a look at it. Find the latch under here. Okay, so under the hood, first thing I'm looking at is the battery, little corroded, looks, looks fine. Um, brake booster is there. Does it work? Not sure. It's full of fluid here. It doesn't look like any crazy amounts of leaks. Serpentine belts there. Check the oil. Uh, it, uh, it's a little low on oil, I think. Yeah, it looks like it's low on oil. Okay, it's our first giveaway. Maybe something's wrong with this motor. Okay, check the oil cap. Nothing weird in there. Even looking over here, see if there's any major oil leaks in this area. Looks like a little bit from the valve cover. That's really, really normal. Nothing too crazy. Go over on this side. Uh, this valve cover is not leaking, so that's good. Okay, let's look under the car real quick and then we'll jump in and see if we can fire it up. Okay, underneath the car, I can definitely see a little bit of oil leakage in the front. Maybe it's coming from the oil pan, maybe even the differential. Um, everything's attached back here. Still got the catalytic converter, undented gas tank. Looking pretty good back here, completely unmodified as far as I can tell. All right, well, with that, I guess we should fire it up. See if it has uh, enough juice in the battery to fire up. See what's wrong with this thing. I'm fully expecting, uh, I'm fully expecting rod knock. That's my guess, especially seeing the oil. Think it ran low on oil think it blew up. I think someone's just trying to get rid of it. Um, if there's any chance that it's a timing belt tincher, that's good. I don't even know if it makes a clicking sound. Maybe it's totally fine. I doubt it though. Uh, so yeah, let's fire it up and see. Oh yeah, battery's totally dead. Let's get a jump back. All right, first fire up. Oh, it's making a weird noise. What is that? Okay, that is not at all what I was expecting. That's a very strange noise. It almost sounds like a bloop, 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 bloop. Um, I don't know what that is. It doesn't sound like rod knock yet. It's definitely running bad. Um, but, uh, but it doesn't sound like rod knock. It doesn't sound like a tensioner. And it did run. I bet you it drives. So I'm going to put some oil in it, run the codes and see if I can figure out what's going on. All right, so I've got it over here and it drove over here just fine. From over there to over here, drove over here. So now it's time to put oil in the car and see what's going on with it. So I know it's low on the dipstick. Maybe that's leading to the issue. It sounds to me like there's some kind of leak, maybe an exhaust leak. It doesn't quite sound rod knocky yet, but if it's that low on oil, we gotta figure that out. So I'm gonna top this thing off with oil and see what happens. All right, we've made a discovery. I just topped it off with two quarts of oil and I looked under the car and sure enough, there's a huge puddle. So where I thought there was a leak before, it seems like we might need to investigate. Maybe, hopefully, there's something loose, but I have a feeling that's pretty bad. So let's get under there and see what we can see. All right, guys, I'm underneath the car. 
and I'm looking around for the oil leak. It looks like it's coming mostly off of this diff. However, I bet it's above that. But check this out. That's the oil pan right there. Or that's, well, it's the block, but that's the side of the block and the side of the oil pan. Look at that. You can actually see the dipstick hanging out. I have an enormous hole in the side of this block, so this motor is toast. This is pretty crazy to see, actually. I'm not 100% sure what's going on. It looks like maybe the oil pan just just died. I don't, I don't know, but I'm guessing it was starved on oil and uh, everything seized up and got really unhappy. So uh, hopefully I can get a better shot of this, but man, that uh, I can't believe this runs. There's the dipstick right there. You can see the rod end bearings. This thing is pretty toast. Uh, so interesting discovery. I wonder if I could throw an oil pan on this and it would survive. Something tells me probably not. Uh, there's gotta be damage to those bottom end bearings at this point, but it looks to me like that's the top of the block and that's just the pan, but there you, there you go. There's my answer. So, uh, all right. Well, I'm gonna have to do a little more digging into this, but that, uh, that answers my question why there's a leak and why it sounds weird. All right, this is the oil trail from pushing the car back to here. So with the discovery of the oil pan or maybe the block being cracked, obviously this is not good. I don't know anything about this. I don't know if it ran for a long time without oil in it. If it did, obviously there's gonna be damage to the bottom end, but it looks like it might just be the oil pan. I don't know yet. So I'm gonna take this home. Right now I'm at a buddy's shop. I'm gonna take this home. I'm gonna see if I can get in there and figure out exactly what's wrong with it. We might be able to save this. If there's no damage to the pistons, we might be able to do just bottom end bearings, throw it in here and see. I'm not 100% sure, but I'm gonna get this back to the shop at my place and start tearing it down from there. So we made it to my shop. It's raining outside, so we've brought this thing in. And I don't know if you could tell in the last video, but I've determined that part of the cradle that holds the crankshaft in there is actually exploded. That's what came out and blew up the oil pan. So I don't know if this motor's toast. I don't know what it needs. However, it's really hard to see in there. And so I figured just for fun, we're gonna pull this out. I've got some plans for this motor. I've got some plans about what to do. But I figure while it's uh, while it's broken, we might as well pull this thing out and get a better look at the damage. So cue the time lapse. We're gonna get this thing out of here. <laughs> Okay, you wanna rotate this side? Let's rotate it my way, nice and easy. It's gonna dump everything. I hear so many rattling things. We probably should have like, oh no, this is good, this will be fine. Yeah, let's pull the oil pan. Torque converter belt bolt fell somewhere. Oh boy. Okay. Nice. Oh no. Oh no. What is that? I don't know, but it's broken and it's in here. Oh, this is a connecting rod bolt. Right there, dude. Look at that. Oh shoot. No way. Is that a snapped rod? It's totally yeah. a snapped rod. And did like just huge chunks. All right, let's put those in the oil pan. Wow, interesting. Mm. Okay. Let's pull the windage tray off. Yeah, look at Yeah. yeah. All right, that's a, those are 12s. Three, two. 
Oh, no. Yeah, dude. Oh, that that sucker. Is... That sucker is broken. That sucker went to the moon. Wow. I'm surprised we were doing that. Yeah, see if you can turn it over. Oh, you no, know, it's uh, it's stuck on the bolts back here. Dang it. We won't be able to turn it over in its current configuration because it's hitting this. All right. I can figure that out later, maybe. Dang. Just look up there. Yeah, that's pretty beat up. So this this right here, there's a circlip in there. I don't even know where a circlip comes from. Oh, there you, you yeah, can see your, there. Your connector. So this this rod is probably screwed, but this is the one you can see right there. How that one went black. Sheared off. Dude, that thing just didn't have oil. It just got really really hot, and uh, yeah, it broke it. So that that piston is just stuck at the top. All right, so we got into the bottom of the motor, and here is the problem. This looks like cylinder number one, two, three. Uh, well, at least the third one back here. This guy it looks like it's seized. It won't move at all on the crankshaft, and it snapped the rod. So the rest of the piston and connecting rod are up there, and then something flew around and did a bunch of damage here. Obviously broke the cradle, damaged the crankshaft, as well as the windage tray, blew a side out here. So... I'm sure this made quite a sound when it when it blew up. So right now we're not able to rotate the motor over because of this. So we'll get this off of here and then see if we can't do a little more archaeology. Okay, so I'm about halfway through tearing off the accessories of this motor. And one of the things I was curious about when I jumped in here was what's the state of the butterfly valves? If you're unfamiliar with this platform, they have butterfly valves that extend the runners. And they tend to fall into the motor. And there's one of them right there. And I know for a fact there's another one missing because I pulled this off. And so here's here's what they're supposed to look like. And I bet you I haven't checked, but I bet you these are loose. Oh, they're not too bad. But you can see this rod is really loose. It's supposed to be a butterfly valve there and one there. And they have both come off. This one, the screws came off. This one actually still has a screw in. It's pretty interesting. I'm curious to figure that out. And uh, it's going to be hard to see with my focus in the light. But there's a uh, there's a butterfly valve in there um, that got crunched. Now, I don't know how long it's been in there. I don't know if that somehow happened when the motor lost a rod. But either way, very interesting. I'm going to keep tearing this apart and see what else I can learn. All right, so got the heads off. And uh, I'm going to do a little more examination of this, but everything's looking pretty good on the driver's side. That's not where I had the failure. However, on the passenger side, um, ironically, the connecting rod goes this way, and so it would blow out on the driver's side. This piston is totally just loose in here. So um, that's, that's fun. I'm excited to see the damage on the other side of this. But the rest of them, they're connected. Actually, the cylinder walls look mostly good. Like I said, I'll do a little more diagnosis. But I'm going to flip this over get the connecting rods out, blow this whole thing apart, and uh, we'll have a full view of the carnage that happened on this motor. So this is the block totally torn down, and I have some answers and some interesting things that I'm learning. So there's a lot to go through in this, so we're gonna start with the block and move our way up. Now, the first thing, is that all of these cylinders look pretty good. There's even just a slight amount of cross hatching in the ones that didn't have damage. However, this one, you can kind of see there's tons of chunks down there. So to get a better idea of what's really going on, we're gonna flip the motor over to the business end here, and you can see all the carnage. This is the cylinder that had the snapped rod on it. And you can see right here, there's a huge hole right there. Now, based on what I can see here, there shouldn't be a hole anywhere else and so i'm thinking that something punched through right there either way i mean that's not that's not good no matter what but there's huge huge divots in the side of that cylinder wall well into the combustion stroke and so this block is most likely totally toast um, with that hole in there i can't imagine there'd be any saving it that's why you saw me wailing on it with a hammer i determined pretty much all of this bottom end stuff 
totally worthless. And so with that, you can see there's a couple other spots where basically that connecting rod flung around and did damage. And so on the, on the block side, tons of damage here. I actually had this cylinder and this one, the piston or the connecting rod was seized in some way. And so I don't know if that was a shared problem or just the heat from one transferred to the other, but either way, both of those were a pain in order to get out. The rest of them look semi okay, but let's move on to the crankshaft. So I got the crankshaft sitting here, and one of the things you'll notice right away is how much color is on here. Now I've wiped this off. There's a lot of color right here. That's one of the main bearings. This is another main bearing, and you can see they've just got tons of bearing material and wear on them. And so, uh, as well as just a lot of damage on the crankshaft. And so this crank is most li likely torched. It would have to be turned down, have to be machined. Um, but with this damage and this seized rod, again, not really worth saving. As you can see here, this thing is totally seized on there. Um, I don't know if I'll be able to get this off. I'm going to get an air hammer in here and try. This stud snapped and lost that bolt. This one was all sorts of mangled and the connecting rod is gone right there, which leads me to ask the question, where's the rest of the connecting rod? So let's talk connecting rods. Here are the connecting rods and pistons that came out and you'll notice this one is missing a lot of bits. It's missing the piston skirt. Um, it's missing all the spot where the wrist pin goes as well as the almost the entire connecting rod. So all of this material is was flying around somewhere inside the motor. Um, so it's gonna have a ton of damage down low. Now the rest of the rods, they look okay. They are straight. Um, they don't look like they have a ton of heat. However, when you get to the bearings, that's a different story. So you'll see here that there's a significant amount of wear on almost all of the connecting rod bearings. You can see it right there and all of them. This should be one material or one color because it's just one material and you can see it's starting to wear through. That's the story on all of them. But then you get to those main bearings that I was talking about earlier and look at that. I mean, this thing is just torched. It's not smooth at all. It feels very gritty as well as you can just tell it's worn through all of the material. Same story over here. This feels uh, a lot like a very fine grit sandpaper rather than a smooth bearing material. So here's some other ones. They're also torched. Now let's talk about my best guess. Now this is kind of a chicken before the egg situation. And so because it's so exploded, it's hard to know. Here's my best guess. My best guess is that this motor was running tragically low on oil. So like, uh, like down to like a quart or maybe even less of oil, it's pulling oil in. And one of these uh, galleys was not getting enough oil, probably this one. And that led for that to seize up based on the heat and the color. It's very black, it looks burnt. So I'm guessing that it seized up it locked up and it was moving at a very high RPM, which caused it to, rather than just slow down and seize, it, it caused it to explode the connecting rod, which sent stuff all over the motor. Now, two things might have happened. One, the oil starvation could have caused this damage beforehand, or the fact that the block exploded out the bottom created an oil starvation issue that was even worse and put wear on this. At this point, it doesn't really matter. That's just a guess that I'm having. But with how much damage is done to this, with how much shrapnel is flying around the motor, I don't feel confident reusing any of this stuff. However, I think the heads are okay. So let's talk about the heads. Okay, so this right here is gonna be the driver's side head. This is not the head that had the exploded piston. It'd be on the other side, on this side. Um, and this one looks okay. I haven't actually shown a flashlight in here to find out how these are seated, but my guess is because the connecting rods were still connected to the pistons, this side is okay. No crazy damage. There is a crack in the manifold, very typical um, for a car of this age. Anything that goes through that many heat cycles is gonna have an issue. But this looks like a good head. However, this head is the one that had the damage. And so one of the things that you want to do when you pull a head off is you want to inspect, especially when you have a connecting rod fail, is you want to inspect the valves. And you can see right there, I'm shining a flashlight through the intake. You can see a little bit of light in there. Now it's possible that there's just carbon buildup, but you can see these other ones don't have it. But more than likely, what happened is that piston came up and it just tapped this valve. I can't really see any notable damage on it. However, I bet that this is bent. Now, this could be totally savable. You pop that out, you pop another one in, and as long as the valve stem, um, uh, I can't remember what it's called, the valve guide, there we go, 
uh, is good, this should be good to go. This could be a very usable head again. I don't see any other damage here. Obviously, I need to pull the exhaust manifold off and shine it on both sides because it's possible, although unlikely, it's possible to hit the exhaust as well. But it looks like the top of the motor and all of these bits right here are potentially reusable. Obviously, bottom end, the cradle, not. Um, this manifold right here with this rod, I, I might delete that. Um, that's a popular modification so that things don't happen. And one of the questions I've been pondering is, is it possible that one of these coming out cause this issue and I, the answer has to be no and the and the reason i say that is it didn't make it into the valve train because it can't it doesn't it can't fit through there maybe a screw did but that's not going to be the same and based on how much heat is in this crank i think this is bottom end failure i think this is an oil starvation issue so that's my diagnosis and that's the big tear down on this motor on all these parts pretty interesting to get in here and figure it out but now it leaves me with some questions. What do I do with that Montero? So normally, I would be inclined to part this out, to take the good parts off and store them and maybe sell some to break even. I'm only $675 into this whole thing. However, I have more than enough parts and this is a pretty nice Montero. So I wanna go over some of this and get your guys' thoughts on this. So it does have a little bit of front end damage, as you can see here. This flare, it's obviously been crinkled. This bumper has a crack in it. That could be stitched together. This could be some pretty easy body work and some paint. Wouldn't be perfect, but it'd go back. Little dent in the hood there would probably come out. Same story over here, but much more minor. Little bit of paint chipping here, little bit of damage. That would pop out. And the rest of it is looking fairly clean until you get to the back. This is just some plastic. That'll hopefully pop out, easily repaired. But there's this hole, there's this rust here. It's pretty bad, it goes up into here. I'd have to remove this glass and I could probably do some um, pretty lackluster repair on this. It's not a very hard panel, it's just kind of down like that. I could probably make something to repair that. However, um, that's, the, that's the only rust on it, but it's kind of like a pain. So there's that rust as well as it's got a bad alignment. Now, if you've seen my other videos, you know that these have really bad issues with alignments. You have to cut the bolts out most of the time. Do I wanna bother with that? Do I wanna get into it? Here's the thing that makes me almost say yes. One, it's got 180,000 miles. And so it's not that old. Two, it's a really nice interior. I had another video showing you guys this, but like this is, this is a pretty well sorted car. It seems like it was well taken care of. It seems a shame to wanna to just throw it in the scrap yard with it looking this good. Now I've got most of the motor is, is back here, most of the parts, but it just leaves me in a conundrum. Normally I would just scrap it. I'd sell the catalytic converters. I'd make a little bit of money and I'd move on. But I want to know, what do you guys think? What do you want to see done to this? Do I save it? Do I find a junkyard motor and do I throw it in? Do I part it out? Um, I'd love to engine swap it. It's just not in the feasibility for me. I just can't commit to that as much as I'd love to. But I wanna know, what do you guys think? What should I do given the variables that I've talked about? So let me know in the comments below. And then maybe when we have some consensus of, of where I wanna go with this, you'll see this one on an upcoming video. I'll see you on the next one.